Two of the big challenges as IT professionals develop a cloud strategy is number one, how do they develop the overall transition plan? And then number two, how do they deal with application compatibility and incompatibility as they make this transition? Joining me today on the whiteboard to help with that conversation is Joe Arnold. He is the Chief Product Officer and Founder at SwiftStack. Joe, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, George. Glad to be here. So let's talk about this. Uh, we've got those two problems written up there, transition to the cloud and application compatibility. What are we lo looking at here? Well, we just face with customers that they have these workflows and they're running on premises and they have a lot of data that they're trying to ingest, okay. but they really want to take advantage of the public cloud and, and when, when you're trying to integrate into the public cloud, what's really important is to be able to use the services that are in the public cloud. Sure. And so one of the things that we find really helps is the first step that they take is they have an on-premise storage system which is cloud native, it's ready to the cloud. So it's like the first step of getting your data into a format that's ready for the public cloud. Okay. And so what we, what we do at SwiftStack is we have a multi-region storage products. So you can have multiple regions that can store that data okay. and then store that with an object interface, so okay. S3. Right. And uh, when people do that, then what they can DEX do is they can start to synchronize their data out to the public cloud. So we'll do cloud. So by synchronize, is that we're just replicating or we're we actually having different data in all three locations? Well, what we've, it, you really need a policy approach. So okay. what we've done with, this on, with our on-premise um, uh, storage product is that you could have different policies to place data across different types of infrastructure, across different regions. And we apply the same policies okay. to how we move data into the public cloud. Okay. So you, we have a technology called CloudSync. Um, and what it does is you can create different policies to either replicate data to the public cloud, and you can use that for a disaster recovery, sure. things like that. Um, and, or you can do um, uh, uh, an archiving, okay. and it can tier okay. um, the data off. And then what it does is it stitches together a single namespace. So I see this as basically one en entity that manages that point. That's correct. Okay. And when an API request comes for a bit of data, if it's not here, it will go fetch it and bring it back there. Gotcha. And okay. that means the applications don't need a change. Right. And uh, they can continue to tier things out. And then when the data is in here, we can take all the other cloud services and they can see the data because what we've done is we've we've stored it in the native format in okay. the in the public cloud. So if I want to use a a service that say Amazon provides, I can it's already ready to go. I just point it at it. That's right. And, awesome. And and the thing is the thing is what we see is that these different cloud services are going to start coming online with different um, services that are going to be unique, differentiated capabilities. Sure. And the same problem going from on premises to the public cloud is going to be from one cloud to another cloud. Right. And so the same cloud sync services are going to apply there. So I'll be able to synchronize between multiple clouds at that point? That's right. Or you know, or at least have access to the data. Gotcha. Um, because you don't necessarily need to move the data all the time right. um, to all the different places. You just need to have it accessible and available gotcha. uh, for, for those services. OK, so that's the good first step is start with an on-prem uh, type of solution. So let's talk a little bit about application compatibility, right? Because we've got S3 right. written up there, and a lot of applications are doing NFS and SMB, right? That's correct. And so that's the second thing, is people want to move to this cloud-native architecture. But really, think about all the applications that people have in their workflow. Sure. It's just uh, either applications they, they've written a while ago, or it's applications that they've purchased, and they don't necessarily speak an object API. Right. And so what we've done is we have integrated um, a file access into the core storage system. There's okay. no gateway. Okay. Um, it runs on the same infrastructure, and that presents a SMB or NFS protocol okay. for the same data. And that's what's really important. Data can go in via the SMB, let's do object, um, and it can come out 
via the object, or okay. vice versa. It okay. is the same data. So if I want to, like, if I got Internet of Things devices that are copying stuff in NFS, and then I want to do image recognition with S3, I could do it that exactly. way. Exactly. Think of all the so think of all the applications and devices that should be using cloud native APIs to store their data because right. they're distributed all over the place. Sure. Well, what we can do now is point them at this SMB interface, ingest that data into it, and then serve that data out via object if you're building an application around, say, a web portal around that data. And so where we're starting to see this a lot is in, in media, where you don't necessarily want to have SMB mounts distributed across the wide internet. We have a Swiss ships with a really nice web client for end users to use. Right. And they can just drag and drop data in there, or they can build an application to, to, to put data into it. But when you get down to those application, those workstations, they need to mount it on an SMB mount point. Right, sure. And so that's it allows them to have that same data access to it. Okay, so one of the I want to clarify here is, and I, I get nervous because sometimes things become a checkbox check item and they shouldn't. Uh, so a lot of object guys, either maybe through a gateway or something, are claiming some level of, of this file. What makes what you guys are doing here unique? Well, so what we're doing is we're not using a gateway. Okay. So a gateway, what it would do is it would put the data in, and and use the S3 backend as just a, a bit bucket for okay. a bunch of blocks of data that exists right. in the backend. What we've done is we've actually created a new data format inside the core architecture of the product so that it's file access friendly and it's object API access friendly. And, okay. and then what that gives us is the ability to not have a gateway, it is at the same interface level as the rest of the object storage system. Well, that would also mean that it would scale with you as you add more nodes and things like that, Correct. right? Because Correct. a lot of times these gateways can become bottlenecks, right? Correct. Correct. OK. Correct. Very cool. So I guess that means that we've got transition to cloud knocked out, right? That's right. So that by starting with an on-prem thing, kind of get used to it, leverage that, and then link in. And then with this uh, file access capability that you guys have, we've also knocked out the application compatibility. That's right, George. Awesome. So then, if, if I'm a person that's looking at this, what's the next step? Well, how do I get started with SwiftStack? Well, okay, so to get started with SwiftStack, go to, go to our website. We have a way to take a look at the product, a test drive, okay. where you can just log in. We have a management plane that is either delivered as a service or it's on-premises, and we have a hosted version, so people can can create it. We can create a certain account on this, and people can try the software out um, uh, through the website. So they can actually just drive. use it, just right. They there. can just use That's it. That's very yeah. cool. That's okay. right. Awesome. Well, Joe, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, George. So there you have it. If you're looking to create a cloud strategy, two of the key things you got to knock out is that transition uh, point, as well as dealing with application compatibility. And here's a good way to get there.